Sports. We got Cameron Stewart. Here he is. Cam, we're going to play a little game. Can I Go tell ahead. you one thing that's bugging me real quick? You know, we were talking about how I was going to get some tacos. Here's here's where my palate has come to bite me. Okay. This taco place has a great combo meal, twelve fifty for two tacos, a side of queso, and a soda. Which, if you've been to these bougie taco places, that's a great deal. Yeah. But the taco I like, which is chicken and tater tots with queso on it, is on the kids' menu, so it does not count towards the deal. That says Break so much heart. about you. Break your heart. Make man. sure you share that with Matt Mosley today. And what's funny is I need no. you to share that with him. No, because Mosley Mosley will make fun of how I'm a child the way I eat and then question my sexuality when I told him I cooked something for dinner. <laughs> like I cooked some pasta and Can he's I like, tell you something? He's like, Oh, how domestic. Oh, I was listening to him and uh, the Doomsday Pod. It's him and Werner. And Mosley makes a comment about cooking. And he goes, and, you know, I, I cook, uh, maybe my wife cooks a little bit more, but, but not much than I do. And then, no, no. and then, and then murder and he kind of go on this thing, like kind of get off my lawn ish wife ish where it's like a little, like they don't cook enough. I was like, okay. Oh, you think you have a tub. Yeah. You should be with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mo- Mosley's so smart. Like he Mosley's go- never cooked a meal, but he doesn't go. He hasn't. I love him for yeah. that, but he doesn't go too far down that line, right? Yeah, well, uh, stop it there. All right, Cam. Yeah. I want to hear the Baylor basketball player you are most excited to watch this year. We got one game in the tank. All right. After that game, with that as a body of work, albeit very small. Okay. And far be it for me to put you on the spot. But is there someone who you like the most? Far be it for me. <laughs> uh, if we're talking just excited, like just that very definition of that word, not stripping it down anywhere from there, it is VJ Edgecombe. Okay. Don't overthink it. Kid's gonna a kid's a freshman, top five recruit, potentially top five pick in the draft. Everyone who sees him absolutely loves him. Had a great um Olympic qualifying tournament with the Bahamas, Mm -hmm. like playing with and against pros did not have a good game. Did not have a good debut. Looked like the lights might've been bright. Um, but he obviously finishes it off with a sports center, top 10 play. And you know, his team played a bad game. He played a bad game and yet you still get something from that. That is exciting. So terms of excitement factor, it's, it's VJ Edgecombe. How about locked on Baylor? What was the feedback after last night's, or after two nights ago, their loss. I'm sure, like you've posted a couple episodes. People are commenting. Mm-hmm. First yeah, of all, it, let me ask you a, a, like a work question. Sure. How it's it's got to be a a little bit of a tightrope now. Um, you've got basketball and football crossing over, mm-hmm. and oh, by the way, good for you, Cam. Both teams are very interesting. Yes. So, how do you distribute? Um, the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. It's football season. Hammer football still. Um, that's not to say don't talk about basketball. Cause like I did a, a live post game after the first basketball game, which was at, you know, we were doing it live at one in the morning. So like, there's still some sacrifice and people care about it, but people are always going to care about football more. Um, and in fact, the locked on people tell us they're like, don't overthink this. If okay. you are in football, do football. Cause there's schools like, you know, I don't, I'm not calling out this podcaster because i don't know what they do but a school like uconn for example yeah is still in football but they really really care about basketball and so that's more of a tightrope for someone like that who's got to be like what is my audience actually looking for and so for me until football is done my audience wants football first and foremost um, i will tell you so one thing. there's still and this is this is the best part of it because leading up to the basketball season like the middle of the week i'm i'm scratching for some stuff uh, for a coach who doesn't make sound bites, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, I've already broken down the game. I haven't really gone deep into this next game. So with basketball in there, it's a huge help. What are some of the topics you've covered recently on Locked On? Past like just days? in general or for yeah, basketball? Like pa- past couple episodes. What are we well, well, let's do this week. This week, uh, obviously, Monday's show was a breakdown of Saturday's win, basically an extension of a post-game show of a big win against TCU with the last segment looking at Bay Oregon Zaga in basketball. We did the live post game for Tuesday's show. That was just all a breakdown of basketball. Um, then we had yesterday's was, um, I had a guest on from the local Tegna station 
So we just talked football because she's covering, um, she's like out there on the field and at every Dave presser. So we kind of lean into that a little bit. So that was about, um, that was about what Dave Aranda said to Isaiah Hankins before the game winning field goal. He apparently (laughs) told him, this is you. It's always been you. And so we kind of played on that of like, it sounded like a line from the notebook. <laughs> and God, I, and, love, I love Dave. Aranda. And I did need to point out, it's always been you, except for that week that we benched you after you missed the 36 yarder against Colorado. <laughs> but uh, I, and I think we've talked about this, like say what you will about Dave Aranda and his treatment of the treatment of the media and all that. I do believe that he said that. By the I do way. believe that he said that. I don't. There's plenty of college coaches who might go up in the podium and say that they said that that I wouldn't believe. I do believe Dave Aranda said. That. I, I need you to change, and I think he inspires belief. I need you to change your your. He does, but change your wording. There's no treatment of the media. There's just well, like, yeah, you're right. There's nothing. If yeah. you were to say, "Hey, Dave, what do you think of the media?" His answer would be, "I don't." Right? <laughs> I mean, that's correct. Yeah, uh, correct. but it, it's great to see him doing well. People around the country are happy to see him doing well. Cam. Yeah. And today, by the way, was uh, a little bit of basketball with uh, football angle, what they need to work on in the bye week. Um, But yes, because I get people who, whenever I'm bitching about Aranda, which happened a lot at the beginning of this year and and last year as well, um, a lot of people from the other team, you know, who we just lost to would be like, no, keep y'all's head up. I really like Aranda. I really like that coach you got. And like, and, and it was every, everyone, but Baylor was liking Dave Aranda. And when you see him one week out of 12, you're like, Oh yeah, you know what? I like this guy. A brilliant defensive guy. And you know, even keeled and seems like a nice guy. And when you don't live with it for 12 weeks, that's how you feel. But this has been a great, this has been great momentum for Dave Aranda. This would be a great question for someone closer to that program, but you're pretty damn close as close as I can get right now. Do you feel like his role <laughs> From an aesthetic standpoint, before the season started, you know, he told us ESPN before that first broadcast that he was like John Wick after they killed his dog. Like he was going to dig into the ground, get all his weapons up and go back to coaching defense. And that was it. Right. Like, yep. and, and even during the games, it felt like he was more, okay, offense is on the field. My back's turned. I'm talking defense. Has that shifted at least, at least from an, optic standpoint i feel like it has like he's more involved in everything now at least on game days and i don't have a clue what i'm talking about i'm (laughs) watching from far away but am i wrong about that i mean it shifts from an optic standpoint because they're winning and like there's nothing wrong with that like i think you know baylor's won three in a row and to be honest the defense hasn't played all that well (laughs) in those in those three wins but they're winning yeah and so this is kind of what my original point was for Aranda, like going into this year is because I, I thought he should have been fired last year and I've been open about that. But, um, but in terms of like the personality and the lip smack and the, you know, quiet, the analogies and all that, we want that to work as Baylor fans. Like we, because we like the guy when it all boils down to it, we want that to be, you know, a successful formula. It just didn't look like a successful formula and it hadn't for a, a long time. And again, he's, he's still got to win uh, one, maybe two more to, uh, to solidify the fact to, to solidify his second winning season in five years. Um, and so there, there is still like more of a want to, I guess, than a belief, if that makes sense from, from fans and, and people who follow this team, they want it to be successful, but there's been, little room for belief in it, but now you've got it. Now you've got three in a row. And um, while the defense hasn't played great, I think he's had good game plans um, for the most part. So things are coming say, up Dave right now. I, I That's a pretty fair assessment. And uh, I think that's what you said. That's what the vibe you get from people around uh, Baylor, that people want him to do well. Uh, they, they do. There's, yeah, no one like hates the guy. No, there's the like people. Really, who, I mean, anybody but the hardcore fans. Right. There's, right. There's those yes. People. There's but that like, crowd. Absolutely. Yeah. There's that's, that's a fantasy world. Yeah. Um, I did notice, and I like speaking to the the Baylor football guys. You mentioned what are they working on in the bye week? I can tell you what they're working on. Really, this is big. I'm going to use this for the show. Relationships. There you go. I have seen more than a handful, or let's say a handful. What's the handful? 
but I've seen several Baylor football players along uh, the Brazos River with who I would imagine would be their significant others, like boyfriend, girlfriend, walking along the river talking. And I'm like, as I'm jogging or at this age walking, I'm like, wow, look at this. Like great, great guys. You know, like that's they, such a, that's an, that's the exact answer. I think Dave Miranda would have given to what, what are you guys working on this week? Relationships. <laughs> But I have, and it makes me proud to be somebody who like like supports Baylor. I'm like, look at these guys, like, you know, and that's like, and that's awesome, man. I mean, yeah. these guys do not get a lot of free time. No, we bitch not. about the the free time that we don't have during football season. Like, to be a student athlete at that level, like, there, that's why I always have a, not a modicum, a ton of respect for these guys. Whatever sport it is, whether you're getting recognized or not, yeah. you have no time, and. You know, of think course, about, think about your significant other, how they're feeling. Yeah. And, yeah. and like a lot of fans from the outside want to be like, oh, bye week. Good. That's that's more time to work on this opponent, whatever. It, and it's really kind of not that at any no. at, in the NFL either. It's like they have a couple practices. Take a couple days, man. Yeah. Keep nope. it light. Yeah. Reset. Rest up like that is we hear it as coach speak all the time. But that is the most important part of a bye week. It's just like rest bro. That, get that, healthy that, that's why these players love sorry him. robertson get healthy sorry sorry robertson I, he sat right where you are and and i said how much just do you, a little bit higher how yeah. much do you love these this second buy and he said i mean you could just tell gushing with approval right and and gratitude like we love it like that's that second buy for this guy these years or for these guys this year is amazing i think and which I think, comes back after what one or two years away because yeah. The old Big 12 schedule did have that because mm-hmm. it was only nine conference games. Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome feature. And and it, I think it is an opportunity for these guys to kind of get back to life a little bit while working on football. I know I don't know what Baylor's schedule is. I know last week, who was it? Um, I can't remember the team, but a Big 12 TCU. coach. TCU? No, That's coming off a bye. <laughs> coming off a bye. Oh, they oh. practiced. Oh, Kansas. Lance Leipold said okay. they practiced twice. During the week, and then they had a big, like, kind of ramped it up for Sunday night, like a Sunday night almost like scrimmage. Um, and then you get back to basics, right? Like, you back to your regular schedule. But yeah, during the week of a bye week, like, that's what it's for. And I think the cool thing is when talking to guys uh, around Baylor, and I think this is something that really we don't even think about this. These, I don't, these facilities, right? The brand new Fudge Center. It's a Rolls Royce of, a, yeah, of an operation over there. Yeah. And those guys, they love hanging out there. And so, like, even they though. They utilize it, yeah. Uh, what's that? They utilize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so even though, you know, they'll have off, I'm sure a lot of them will be hanging around there watching film on their own accord. Dude, I saw, this is very relevant. I saw a picture of A.J. DeBonsa, who's the number one prospect basketball 2025 class. Has Baylor in his like top five, top six, but the powers that be feel that he's not a that Baylor's not a player for him um, in this point in the process. Picture of him from last night. He was at his sister's high school volleyball game. Uh, this kid's from Brockton, which is like we two towns there. over from where I grew up, and his sister went is going to the same high school that my brother went to. And it's you'll love this, Pete. It's like classic uh, Northeast. Catholic high school. Yeah. Uh Cardinal Spellman is what it is. And um Cardinal Spellman. It's like you you kind of if you're not from around there, like you'll see, ooh, Cardinal Spellman. Like, well, that must be, you know, nice prep school. And really what it is is a public school with a religion class in the city. <laughs> like I know you've seen plenty of those. Yours was a little bit nicer, but you I know you've seen plenty of those. And I was like, dude. I have such a connection and we can't get him here to Baylor. His sister went to the same, goes to the same high school. My brother went to bringing up another point. I want to bounce off you one more. Last and one and all we... the prep, the prep schools in new England are falling behind because all these kids are going somewhere else. Deponsa plays in Utah. Asimoto, the kid from Lynn who plays for Baylor top 50 prospect played in Arizona. Yeah, Cooper flag played in Florida. I'm looking What's forward. Tilton doing? What's Brewster doing? They don't have the national schedule. They don't have the facilities. That's what made me think of it. So they need to get involved. I'm I, telling you. Right, I'm telling you. Do you think that Baylor? Because I, I thought this when I saw that that young man's like top five or whatever that was Jabonsa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, well, I wonder how quickly Baylor falls out after that <laughs> drubbing against Gonzaga. I thought that. I was like, does that affect these guys? Maybe. No. no good. No. I mean, and this is going to sound kind of a shitty way to put this, but like. You're still getting them after losing in the second round three straight years. Yeah. 
So it, I think the Debonsa thing is going to be a money thing, which, I mean, all the power to the kid. Yeah. I, I know BYU, the, the, the figures being thrown around that BYU is offering him $4 million. It's like, whoa. You know, but there's another top five kid that Baylor's really hard on, uh, Koa Pete, um, who was visiting during the homecoming weekend. So uh, that's pro- they they have had a great job of going after the biggest fish in the pond, and yeah. if not getting them, being able to pivot. Trey Johnson, they were hard on for a long time. Trey he was Johnson. number one uh, in the in the class as yeah. a junior. He ended up slipping a little bit. They didn't get him. He went to UT. Had a great game for the Horns the other night. Um, and they pivoted to VJ Edgecombe, who finished higher after their senior year uh, in the rankings. So they're good at pivoting. Well, Co- I think Coach Drew has a chance to be in the next Coach Cal if he gets keeps getting guys picked in the first round. Uh, I hope I hope he'll win a few more titles than Cal. Uh, well, we'll see them both on display see Saturday. This Cam will be there. Yeah. All right, we'll be here tomorrow to 1 p.m. Central Time. Scotty wants everybody to like and subscribe. Let's Do get it that for Scotty. Done. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends, man. Let's get more people involved in this. Um, and uh, thank you to Slovacics. Of course, thank you to Scotty and Cam and Dan Ingham. And thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.